Are you struggling to generate leads for your business? Then this chapter of the business library is just for you, because we have Matt Harbeck on, and he's great at finding leads using networking events and LinkedIn. But before we start talking more about that, this video is sponsored by the course Markdip, so the link for it is going to be down below. So if you hear something that you like, want to learn more about it, definitely do check it out. So to start us off, Mark. Why do you love LinkedIn as a marketing platform? Thanks for having me on, Mods. Um, I love it because um, you know it's great for somebody in B two B like me, um, because most businesses and virtually all business owners and leaders are on that platform. Um, in addition to just the platform itself, I, I really like um, their weekly emails that tell me um, my number of post impressions um, over the past week and which post was my top performing post. And I use that data um, to refresh my top post topics so that I always know in the future um, what will generate, um, what's most likely to generate the, the highest level of, of engagement. Hmm. It has a bunch of good search stuff. Sometimes LinkedIn does frustrate me because it feels like the tech doesn't all work always work very well i've found um, i don't know if you had some experiences with that in the past yeah i found that too um i found that um i mean in, a, in another area of linkedin i found that the paid ads i mean they worked really well um for b2b companies they they, gen they tend to work better than facebook facebook ads for example um so i do like the ads area but it's very rigorous um you know you really have to test and retest and um, to find out what's really going to stick for, for ads, for example. So there are some sections that are good, but but really have a high bar for time commitment and testing. Um, and of course, as we all know, you know, it's pretty easy for companies to spam you in the DMs. So that's always that's always a danger or to get a, a, a connection request for somebody who's just going to immediately pitch. Um, so I, I don't like that aspect of it. But but for a free platform and the access to the number of businesses and business owners, um, I, I think it's great. Yeah, I think you make a good point in the ads. I think there's a good reason for them working better. Just by the amount of less advertising you see on LinkedIn. So when people see an ad, they are more keen to maybe not think it's an ad and just start reading and only afterwards realize in the an ad compared to like a YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. One of the first things you look at when you see your videos down below, is it ad, not ad? And if it's ad, you just scroll, you don't care. Um, you just want to get by it as fast as possible. I know you yeah, use... Exactly. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, oh, I, was, I, was just, I was just agreeing with you, exactly. Perfect. Yeah. This is, uh, sometimes I don't want to, I won't want to kind of get guest stuff because it is more about them than us. I need to remember that as, as host. And I know specifically when it comes to your marketing strategy for your own business, the marketing strategy you have had success with is using LinkedIn events or finding events using LinkedIn to go to and then find potential client prospects at, at those events. So the first question is naturally, how do you find the good event good events on LinkedIn? Yeah, great question. And it's not in the place that most people might think. Not um, at all. I, yeah, so so there is a dedicated events area. If you just search for anything, um, you know, you have different uh, filters or basically what is different areas of LinkedIn. It's a huge menu of like 10 or 15 items immediately under the search window. Um, and one of those one of those sections is events. Um, and um, I actually host some free events on LinkedIn where I talk about why the events area is not the best starting place to find um, most networking events, especially for speed networking events. So as opposed to in the events area, I search for networking events, virtual networking events in the posts area. So, you know, just enter a search term and then in the filters, click on posts to make sure you're, you're searching just in posts. But what I do is, and I have this on my calendar to, to do every week. Sometimes something comes up and I, I try to at least do this every two weeks, but I'll search in the posts area. And one term that I recommend, and I talk about this in my, in my video course, 
is um, I typically use two search terms in the posts area, and one of them is virtual networking event, um, all in quotes. Um, and then there's some, in the posts area, there's some additional filters. So I make sure to use the sort by filter where I can sort, sort by the latest posts and also the date posted. It gives you an option of like in the past 24 hours, past week, past month. So if I'm searching weekly, I'll, I'll search for new posts in the past week. Um, and I also have a video on this topic on how to source virtual networking events from LinkedIn um, on Harbeck Marketing's YouTube channel. Um, so that provides more information and that basically teases out the first module of the nine modules um, in my in my video course. So will that will be linked down below because I've seen the video, so I know exactly what Mark's speaking about. But I realized as you were speaking, if somebody especially listened to this as that's just an audio while striving, you're not gonna remember each and you'll set once you get old. So don't worry, it's down below. Save it ready for whenever you're ready for it. So, in the way of like finding the networking events, what is some of the things you should look at to know is this an event I want to go to or not? Yeah. So, it what what's really easy in the in the post filter that process that I was just talking about is that a lot of events will have images in the post where they you know say what the name of the event is, they say the date. Um, some of those, if you're just looking for virtual events, some of those. Uh, promotional banners will have if it's an in-person event they'll have you know where it is and and, uh, and the time and everything um, so I, I really like when posts share the image that that spells out every all the important details of the events because if it's in person and you're just looking for virtual then you can keep scrolling um, you also see in images you see a lot of events that are networking events but are only for sometimes there's women only business leaders so I haven't seen any events that are men only but you could be you can't do it's that. Like, yeah. So there, you know, so, some of them on the women's side will segment by by gender, um, along with um, and or um, only certain industries. Um, for example, I, I saw a networking event the other day on um, for mun municipal communicators, um, and I think it was just in Canada only. So there you had geography specific, industry specific. So um, I typically like to scan in my post feed and look, like I said, at those images first, and that'll tell me at a, at a high level whether whether it's relevant to me, um, whether it's for all industries, all genders, then I can keep looking, or or if it's not, I, then I just uh, keep scrolling. Once you've started attending some events, what are things you recommend people do in order to you know, sort of get their message out, make sure that their message, that they're in the right group, that that the message is resonating with the other people at the event. What are some clues that our listeners can look for? Are you talking about reaching out to leads that you connect with at events? Well, I'm talking about even in the event itself. Um, let's say it's a live event. How do you sort of read the, not really read the room, but how do you sort of read the screen and see when you talk, who's really listening? Or how do you pick up on, on some of the people you might want to follow up with? That's a great question. Well, one thing I do um, in the first five to ten minutes of the event, um, if it's a virtual, if it's a speed networking event, then all the attendees are going to be broken up into breakout rooms for, for most of the event. But one thing in terms of relationship management for maybe I've had one-on-one -on -one calls with one or more attendees in the event. So I, one of my best practices is I, in that first couple minutes of the event, when the when the host is talking about the rules and the agenda, um, is to in the if if your if your Zoom is not already in gallery view, then, then I put it in that, and then you can look at the panes of who's attending and look at the names and the frames and see if anybody is familiar. So I'll do a quick direct message in the chat to somebody if 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 I see somebody I recognize who I have a good relationship with I've talked to before. Um, so I do that, um, and then um, I look at the chat. I, a little bit during the event. Uh, to answer your question, mo most of what I do for that is after after the event. So mm. it's always a best practice if you're in a Zoom event. Some other solutions offer this too, where you know you can you can hit the three dots or hit more options in the chat area and make sure to, especially right before the end of the end of the event, is save the chat. And that way, so I don't do 
if, if I'm able to like suss out this information in the event, then great. And maybe I'll take some notes on my what I use for for notes during the event is a simple just .txt file. So, and I'm a pretty fast typer. So, if I see somebody that looks like a lead in the event, I'll jot down their name. Um, if I get it, if they if they say verbally or put in the chat their company, then I'll I'll note that too, so I know who they're connected with. Um, but if I don't get that information in the event, then definitely after the event, I save the chat and then I I systematically go through the chat and identify. You can do you can do a find in the txt document of of the chat transcript, um, and I use that to find. Like for me, I'm looking for my clients for website analytics are marketing agencies and fractional CMOs. So if somebody says that for in their description of who they are and what they do, then I search for that in keywords. F functions of people who would work for me are they're an agency that does social media and or website development or website design. So I'm always looking for those keywords in the chat transcript, and that's how I d identify um, good leads to, to work with me um, after the event. All right, thanks, Mark. That was a really good explanation. Moss looks like he has a question. This thanks, is Mike. a great excuse when you don't have anything to say. Moss looks like he has a question. I came prepared, <laughs> luckily. So when it, like, you had a networking event, I will kind of bring my question forward a little bit. Uh, you connected with some people, you got it out, you went through the process, you just beautifully put out to us. What does the process, like some key points of the process look like afterwards to actually connecting with that person, building that like, know, and trust? Yeah, great question. So in my course, um... Uh, it's called Virtual Networking to Lead System. I do include a script for this that I use, and I've I've honed this over. I used this heavily in Q2 of this year, and started using it at the be at the beginning of the quarter, and then honed it. Um, so, if if anybody gets my course, there is an included script that that speaks to this. Um, I use the script for emails as well as DMs on LinkedIn and, and other platforms. Um, my advice I can share here that my advice for the subject line um, after when you want to follow up with somebody that you click with at an event and you think that they could be this is for either direct leads who you know who fit your ideal client profile as well as people who you think could be leveraged for promotional partnerships um, cross promotions or other other types of partnerships or even just referrals um, i will what i use in my subject lines almost always is the name of the event so sometimes that could be even the name of the group like there's this prominent networking group in the u.s called nexco so it could be, I could put, you know, Nexco speed networking event. So that would be the event and the event series name. And then at the end of the subject line, I'll just add the words, you know, follow up. Um, and that makes it relevant to the recipient. Um, it keeps it short, um, which is always the best practice for, you know, email subject lines. Um, it avoids spam trigger words. And it doesn't turn the lead off by, by jumping directly into your offer. Um, like a lot of, you know, even though this has this this email outreach or or DM has a networking context, you're not you're not reaching out um, truly cold to them, um, but that that doesn't turn them off um, by jumping directly into your offer like like a lot of cold uh, sales emails would. Um, and also, um, I unlike a lot of others um, who are marketing um, over emails or DMs. I don't do drip campaigns for leads who, who don't reply to my first email um, on a timely basis. Mm -hmm. um, if in my head, if they don't reply, then they're they could be busy, they or they're just not interested in talking further right now. So my time is better spent instead of creating like drip email sequences to contact again that that first person from my cold uh, outreach. Um, in my mind, my time is better spent sourcing the next lead to reach out to. Um, of course, you can set up drip campaigns, but that's just a lot of extra time and A-B testing. Um, so I would rather, you know, just reach out in the, initially to them in the context of the event, um, like I said earlier, for that subject line. Um, and if they're not interested, just identify more, more leads to reach out to. I think that's a good point. I especially like you use something that's familiar to them. So they see the networking event. Oh, 
they want to have some, pro- hopefully, positive memories with wh- whatever that word is. And then you don't go directly and sub it. Uh, people need to be warmed up a little bit. Uh, I think there's exactly. plenty of examples. Um, if you have promoted the mind, you just had a dating example in your head. Uh, well, we will leave that for today. However, when it comes to networking events specifically, I, m- I must imagine you've been at a lot of networking events. Like, what is some of your favorite events? Yeah. That people um, could like go to. Yeah, definitely. Great question. So, I mentioned Nexco. Um, mm-hmm. They do have chapters, kind of like BNI which is another very large in the U.S. Um, networking group. Um, and Nexco and BNI and others will let you go to anywhere from typically two to four free events before they um, prompt you to pay to, to, to become a member um, so you can attend more events and get other benefits. Um, so those those are both great groups. Um, the great thing about both of them, ne- Nexco and BNI, is that you can attend you know, different chap- chapter uh, meetings and that way you can get more mileage. You could you could test out a chapter a chapter for um, one or two events, and if you don't like it, then move on to another chapter. So you, the individual event tester, is getting a lot of different uh, event exposure um, even before you would hit that hit that paid level with any given chapter. Um, there's there's an event series um, by uh, Blue Heron Business Partners. Um, based out of Seattle, I believe, um, called Grow Your Network, um, and that's a that's a free event series. Um, and I believe that's monthly. Um, one of my, one of the first event series that I got started with was um, out of Chicago, and now they're national, called the Inner Circle Network. Um, and they do mostly paid. They they do multiple networking events per month, mostly paid. Some of them are free. Even the paid ones are very low low cost, um, and they're all they're. Uh, got a large member base and they're growing rapidly. Um, um, Alex Hit um, does a weekly speed networking event um, every Monday, um, and he's and always getting actually, more and more. By weekly or twice a week now. Friday as well. I like this Monday. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. When this is out, he's going to be doing both Friday and Monday. Oh, that's great! I, I hadn't heard that. I, I just knew about his Monday one. Um, well, even better. So yeah, he, he run he runs a tight ship. Um, he gives a chance for business owners to quickly, um, have, have, uh, small breakout rooms with lots of other, other owners. Um, so yeah, th- those are some, some event series I like. I've only tried speed networking, but I'm definitely gonna add the other ones to my left list. Give him a checkout. I'll leave a few ones there. Me and Mike Lee like as well. So there's going to be plenty of networking events down in the description for anybody to check out. Uh, so you can actually try what you learned today. So no excuses. We don't like those. One thing I also would like to ask you, just out of my own curiosity, what made you put this formula into a course? Why not just keep it for yourself? Less competition in that way. Yeah, well, I'm I'm all about helping you know, small businesses, uh, especially, and providing a lot of value to biz- businesses in general. Um, I, like I uh, alluded to earlier, I really put this um, system for my business of what I call a virtual networking first approach. Um, I started it in Q1 this year, but I really uh, did it in full force and really tweaked it um, over Q2. So for my business, when I switched from Prior, prior to that focus, I had been doing a combination of cold emails that were truly cold emails, paid ads, and social media. Um, and my business is a service business, and it depends on building out um, a very heavy um, you know, sales call pipeline and have, having a full calendar for that. Um, so when I, switched on, when I switched from those methods as the primary driver of those bookings um, to that virtual networking first approach, um, it was really a game changer for my business. Um, and I'm in the small marketing agency space. And at a time when I was hearing from direct competitors and others in the space that um, it's just a for B2B sales and in that space, it's it's a past, I don't know, six months to a year has been more and more challenging um, because their clients um, and clients of a small marketing agency are typically smaller businesses themselves 
with smaller marketing budgets and all businesses are taking more time to decide. They're really watching their budgets closely. Um, so in that context, I was hearing that others who are competitors to me, if they sign one new client every two months right now, that's considered pretty good. So in that same time in Q2, I was able to sign an average of two clients per month. Um, so I was beating that average. And I also, in addition to that, had built an additional um, client leads pipeline valued at over 13,000. So that was really a game changer for my business in that, in that service area. So with my helpful nature, I want to help other businesses. So I, so I decided to, you know, distill this into a course. Um, that strategy for my business helped, helped me cut through the noise and unpredictability of social media um, and also get a much higher email response rates than I had gotten prior where there was no networking context involved and in sending truly, truly cold emails. So I figured that I, um, that I could help out other solopreneurs and first-time business owners like me um, to benefit from, from a DIY system like this. So that's why I put it into a video course um, with scripts and attachments um, and now provide that for, for other um, small businesses. Yeah, it's a really cool thing that you did as well. Some very helpful information. One of the things you talk a little bit on your website and you have posts on LinkedIn. I want everybody to go read some of Mark's posts. Website analytics. Since the beginning of websites, there have been people that swore they could give you accurate analytics. And probably 95% of the ones I met have no idea what they're doing. But Mark's pretty good at it. So Mark, can you tell us a little bit about what makes analytics work for a business versus, you know, I guess the question is, why, why would somebody hire you as opposed to all the other people out there promising what they can do? Yeah. Um, well, because you're going to, um, you know, keep, keep your budget down because I only work in Google Analytics 4, GA4. Um, so for one example of what I do, so there's like in the events area, which talks about conversion events for, for your website and events are everything from clicks to file downloads to generate lead from form submissions, um, scrolling a whole bunch of uh, actions. Um, so one of the things that I do is customize that events report. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of a, com a different, uh, I'm not a direct competitor. I just heard about a solution the other day called Lucky Orange. And there's, there's also some people that I know who do highly customized analytics dashboards for, um, for websites as well as social media. Um, but I am kind of, I take that one step of, if you're already in G4, I help to customize the events report. And companies that work with me, especially if they're on a budget, you know, don't have to go that that route. I mean, while well, while well, solutions like custom, highly customized dashboards uh, outside of GA4, you know, have their benefits and they provide a lot of granular information. You know, sometimes companies are budget restricted to to not be able to go that route. So um, I help companies on a lean budget. Um, customize and transform that events report in GA4 so that, for example, if you don't have any customization, one of the things you can look at um, stock or by default in there is, you know, clicks across the whole website over a given period. But I help parse that out to say, oh, your homepage hero section, your key call to action there got, got clicks, your top menu item got clicks, your, your footer, your footer number one call to action got, got this many clicks. Um, so I help parse that out so that um, I mainly market my services to marketing agencies and fractional CMOs so those companies can look at a client's GA4 as well as the, the client themselves. And I help illuminate that data so that um, on a high-level view, instead of just looking at clicks or you know an event broadly across the website, they can immediately pull up that events report, look at... Um, See the, see the event name corresponding to their specific call to action, whether it's across all pages, like in a menu or on a home page or another key landing page, and immediately know how that specific metric and call to action is doing. Um, and that helps inform, you know, once the tracking is set up, um, you know, typically a lot of agencies will wait, you know, two or three months, maybe six months to see how the data is doing. And that helps the agency, as well as if I'm working with a direct business, um, to to look at, to look at the data and strategize and say, 
oh, we've got to change this content on this page because we've got this higher ticket call to action that makes us more money, but we're not doing the right um, language or you know overall call to, call to action on the page to to convert. Um, so I help at a high level with with strategy um, reimagining um, and planning and changing strategies that aren't working. Um, and I also advise my clients, um, especially marketing agencies. Um, I have a lot of past ex experience with landing page development in general. Um, everything from you know videos, images, everything on the page, um, text. So I also um, am a consultant with agencies to kind of give them a second brain and pair of eyes on that to to best help their clients um, with, with strategy. Well, thanks. That is really helpful. I know our listeners are going to appreciate understanding more of the depth and width of what you do as opposed to all the other people they might hear about. So, folks, we're telling you, the reason we had Mark on here, we like what he's doing. You guys should go check it out. Definitely do. Definitely do. I would recommend. Before we round this off, Mark, is there a final bit of advice, wisdom you want to leave our audience with? Sure. Um, you know, one one thing we didn't talk about that I'll just share about um, as quick as I can. Um, so one thing that I'm asked a lot is, okay, you've you know you've networked with people at at an event, you've had some FaceTime with them or virtual FaceTime. Um, you you get them on a one on one call. What are some best practices for for that one on one call with with a lead? Um, so I'll just share a couple that that, that I use. Um, obviously, try to do your homework and you know, before you get on the call with them um, to make sure that you're very clear in your mind about um, how with one, one or more top pain points of that, of that lead, you know, how, how specifically you can, you can solve that for them. Um, so if you're not equipped for that, you know, when you, when you book the call with them, make sure that, you know, before you're on the day of that call, you know, make sure you're really set in your mind with, and with your notes on, on how you can do that. Um, and at this point on the call, my advice for especially service businesses is to, this is what I do. I share my screen and I show examples of, in my case, client websites of marketing agencies and the before and after, what we're now tracking on specific pages um, of clients and, and how it's helping the, the end client and the agency. Um, so if you're a service business and you have before and after examples, try to share your screen. Um, if you sell products, then you can always play, if you, you know, Hopefully you have a concerted effort in your business to gather, consistently gather, um, especially video testimonials of, of satisfied customers. So you can play those on the call if, if somebody hasn't seen that. Um, and or you can show um, five-star reviews of, of highly satisfied customers or clients. Um, between your product or service landing page and your pitch presentation on that one-on-one -on -one call, um, you should have a good idea as a seller if what you're offering is resonating in a lot of calls, of course, are, you know, half an hour um, is, is a typical one-on-one -on -one call length. So you really should, after doing your pitch, you should have a good idea in 10 to 15 minutes um, if what you're selling is really resonating and you're looking for phrases from your from your buyer of, you know, I like what you offer, I want to work with you. So my advice to this point is to, if they're, if they're interested, then quickly talk about, you know, next steps to get started. But then after that, if you, let's say at that point you have 15 minutes left on the call, my advice is to step back um, and listen, listen really well to what, what your lead is saying um, and prompting him or her with, with follow-up questions if needed. Um, if you hear some version of, I want to work with you, then you can really turn off your hard sell mode um, and see what other information you can get from your lead. Um, on that call, of course, if you're a fast typer, take good notes. Um, if not, you can also use a lot of the free tools that are out there like Fathom. Um, is a popular one that I don't personally use, but but I see it a lot on my calls. Um, and then one additional touch that I do after that follow that one on one call um, that not every seller does is to send a follow up email or DM, um, simply thanking the lead for their time. Even that goes a lot to to say that you you're indicating that you want to you want to form a long term um, positive relationship with this person. All very good points. I think people should want to go down and check out the full formula below in the description now. And I will also make sure your website is down there. Is there any other place people can contact you? 
Um, I'm on LinkedIn, so just look, look for my name, Mark Harbeck, on there. Um, you can reach me that way. But yeah, LinkedIn and the website are, are probably um, n- number one uh, places to reach me. Both of them will be down there. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to come on the, yes, this, this library today.